Hey guys, this is the Wiggle Man, and welcome back to Wiggle's Miniature Workshop. I am recording and edit editing this video together on the eve of 10th edition, so by the time you see this 10th edition will be released. If you got your pre-orders through, congratulations to you. Not salty at all that I missed the pre-order window because I was at work. However, I'm going to take my chances at my local game store tomorrow. I'm not quite sure how it works, whether they get an amount allocated that they can put out for pre-order and an amount allocated that they can sell on the day, but we'll soon find out. Failing that, I'll probably try and buy some World Eaters if they've got any in store. I really, really feel like painting corn. But to the here and now, what are we doing today? We are painting Vashtor the Archophane. Uh, I've taken a long, long hiatus from painting Warhammer, and the Lord of Contagion proxy video that I released last week was kind of a bit of a test bed for me to see if I can still do it. I've been working on a lot of larger scale projects lately, and I was wondering, can I still paint at the Warhammer scale? Looking at the views and looking at the response to that video, it turns out, yes, I can. So it gave me the confidence to try painting Vashtor. Vashtor is a model that I've had an eye on for a long, long time. Ever since it was announced, I thought, this is it. This is the game's workshop I love. It's a cracking model. I heard the rules aren't great, but I don't play the game. I enjoy building it. I enjoy painting them. And not only did we have this cracking model of Vashtor, but over the last few months we've had the new Demon Prince model, the updated one, which looks fantastic, allowing real, real cool customizations between each of the Mono God factions. And on top of that, on top of that, of course, we have had Angron, the Primarch of the World Eaters. Both of those models are on my radar on as stuff I want to paint. If you'd like to see them painted as well, let me know in the comments below. We hit 11 comments last video. Shocking! Huge amount of comments. Way more than one. Uh, so thank you to my 11 commenters, which I think half of them are me responding to the commentees. But thank you to the people who are asking questions, giving compliments, things like that. Um, you could tell me to go boot myself uh, in the comments if you like. It still helps the, uh, <laughs> the algorithm discover the video. But as you can see so far, we're going to move on to how I painted Vashtor. So I started off with a black undercoat with a zenithal highlight of the titanium white ink through the airbrush. I then put some shadows in with some muted grey ink. Never really used it before. I feel like I rely a bit too much on my muted pink over the last few videos, so I wanted to try something a bit different to put the shadows in. And then on top of that, we're going over the skin with a khaki type colour. Once we've got the basic skin tones down, we're going to use Vallejo Metal Color, one of my favorite metallics, and we're going to be using the Gunmetal Color. We'll use that to base in all of the metallics around the model. With the steel based in all over the model, I then switch over to Vallejo Metal Color Copper and start blocking in all of the areas of the model that I want to be a brass color. Wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with the brass at this stage, I just wanted to get it blocked in for now. So with the meta metal 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 metallics, uh, the metals <laughs> all uh, blocked in and the skin tone blocked in, I switch over to AK Interactive Streaking G Grime and I push that through the airbrush and I spray it all over the model. Moving my phone out of the way, realizing it was in the uh, direct path of the spray pattern, I don't think uh, that would go too well on my screen. Once we've got a decent saturation over the model of the streaking grime, I switch to the good old cotton swabs, or the Q-tips as you Yanks like to call them, and I begin to rub away the excess. Uh, originally, I so when I used to do this, I would use mineral spirits, and I would always, always, always end up reactivating the acrylic paint underneath, ruining the paint jobs that I had done prior, even if I'd used uh, varnish coats and things like that. I'm finding a lot more success just using the streaking grime out of the bottle and then just wiping away the excess. Does it stain the model more? Absolutely yes, but the next stage we're going to punch up the highlights. So 
So now that we've rubbed off the excess of the streaking grime, I move over to one of my favourite palette skin tones, which is Vallejo Game Colour Bone White, mixed with a one-to-one -one ratio of Vallejo Glaze Medium. And then I just simply start glazing in the muscle definition around the model. What do I mean by the muscle definition around the model? Well, I mean basically where it looks like his muscles have tensed up. Uh, this really, really helps to just add, it's it's a really good spot to highlight around the model to bring more attention to this body, essentially. And besides, if you look at Vashtor while he's naked, this boy lifts. Like, look at those muscles. And you should check out those glutes as well, my boy squats. So to really draw attention to the face, we've already been over the face with a highlight once, but we're going to go back over with the super teeny tiny brush, the triple zero. We're going to go back over with that same glazed uh, bone white mixture, and we're going to start highlighting all the ridges on his face. Of course, whenever you look at a miniature, usually the first thing someone looks, like, looks at is the face, and that's where you want to be putting the most detail into your paintwork. And while we're at it, we're also going to highlight uh, some of the shoulder areas as well. Again, more of the muscle tissue on the shoulders. One way I like to think about highlighting a model is kind of a, a, an, a, an omission from the main focal point of the model. So most models, it's going to be the face. You want to be putting the most detail there. Then you'll want to put some detail, some detail, but not loads, around the shoulders. Moving down to the bottom of the legs, you're not painting in as much detail. That way you're getting a good balance of how long it takes you to paint the model and how good it's going to look at the end product. At this stage of the process, I had no idea what I was going to do with the eyes and the face of the model. I think now mainly to the artwork of the Dark Angels fighting Vashtor and just how bright and glowing and menacing his face looks. So I decided I'm going to try some OSL, some object source lighting if you don't know what that means. Um, that is the idea that parts of the miniature are glowing and you are painting in those glowing effects. I've never really given uh, OSL techniques a, a, a proper shot before. And I wasn't, again, I wasn't entirely sure how I was going to approach this. So I painted the eyes white and left them like that for now. Whilst I mulled over how I was going to do the OSL on the face, I decided to highlight all of the uh, pistons around the model with uh, Vallejo Metal Color Aluminium. 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 Uh, I just like to use this. Uh, I think someone uh, I once saw a knight, Imperial Knight painting tutorial. It was probably the one that Duncan did for the Warhammer uh, channel, where they just painted all the pistons with a nice bright metallic to show the fact that it is a well oiled, well geared machine. And if you think about it, Vashtor is basically a demonic arms dealer. He is the master of the Demon Forge, the Soul Forge. So he's not going to have rusted parts all over the model. He's going to be pristine. He's going to look after himself because he's going to know how. So here we have it. Here I am attempting to paint the OSL. So I started off airbrushing on a very low PSI with my titanium white ink. Again, if you do not have this in your miniature painting arsenal, you really, really should get it. It's such a good ink to use. It's so thin, it's so vibrant, it's really, really good to push through an airbrush. Uh, I, I started off basically trying to spray it around the eyes, around the mouth and around the gas mask. What I hadn't realised until I started laying down colour is I accidentally caught the edges of the horns as well, which actually led to a much, much better looking effect. 
So putting down the first layer of color now, we're going to be using the Vallejo Express orange color and we're going to push that through the airbrush. I've not really tried airbrushing with Vallejo Express, but I will warn you if you try to do this, that if you are pushing it through at a low PSI on an airbrush, it does clog extremely easily. So if you're going to do this, make sure you add some airbrush flow improver into the mix. Just one drop should do, but make sure you do that because otherwise you can have some nightmares with clogging. But after that, just one layer of the color, it Auto, it automatically just makes the model look so much cooler. But we're going to take that one step further. We're going to go again. So now we're going to add a bit more white into the model once again before we start applying our second layer of color. This time we're trying to contain what we're painting white. So just the tips of the eyes, just the more of the mouth and just the little dots inside the gas mask. So with the white once again put into the model, come on, focus. Thank you, camera. We're now going to hit the model with Vallejo Express Imperial Yellow, I believe the color's called. And that's a very bright, vibrant uh, yellow contrast paint. We spray all over the face once again with that. Again, it's really reinforced that the, this model is emanating a glow out of its eyes, out of its mouth and out of its gas mask. However, I felt like it was a bit too much on the face because if you look at the brow, there shouldn't really be much light coming onto kind of his, his brow, his forehead. So we're going to go back in and correct that afterwards. So to correct where we've had overspray on the model, we're now going to go back to our bone white glaze. I know, I, I love this. And we're going to paint over the forehead of the model and around the eyebrows once again. That's going to bring the colour back down, the intensity of the burning effect back down. So it is just around the, the jaw area of the face. So now with a very effective looking fire effect coming out the face, we're going to be lazy. We're just going to hit the uh, horns of the model, just the exterior of the horns, with a black wash. Is it a cop out? <laughs> Absolutely it's a cop out. I was feeling, ex I would say emotionally drained uh, after the whole painting process on the face. Was it going to look good? Can I pull it back if I do it too much? Uh, it sounds silly, but miniature painting can be quite draining at times. So I decided to have a bit of a palette cleanse. So whilst we wait for the horns to dry off, we're going to start painting all of the armour panels on Vashtor. As you'll notice, I kept him down to a sub-assembly. I'm not going to go over the painting of every single component of this model, however I'll go over the general idea of how I painted each part. So we are base coating the armour panels with Vallejo Metal Colour Copper to begin with. Uh, I want to do something a little bit different when painting the armour. So the idea was base coat it with the copper because I'm terrible at painting the trim after the fact that the uh, panels themselves have been painted and then I was going to hand paint all of the armor panels. One thing I think that I don't pay enough attention to as someone who paints miniatures for fun and enjoyment and relaxation is texture on a model. So the approach I decided to take with the armor panels was to glaze it up and give it almost a chalky element to it. I decided on a cool grey to contrast with the warm kind of pale flesh tones that we've got on the model itself and we're going to highlight that up with glazes to a near white. So 
So adding in the first glaze now, we're just going to glaze back over the armor panels, leaving the recesses of the model. And then we do the exact same process again. Once we've got that down, we then use our black Vallejo black wash and we start pin washing all of the vents and the icons on the armor, letting the uh, capillary, 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 capillary action uh, play with the wash and allow it to run into all of the seam, all of the kind of the cracks where the symbols are and the vents are. Then for adding detail onto all of the brass trim around the model, we go to good old fashioned Agrax Earthshade. This is a technique I've been using ever since I restarted painting Warhammer, seven years ago I want to say. Agrax Earthshade over copper, brass colours and then just little dots of highlights. It's one of my favourite uh, ways of getting depth and detail onto a model. So with the vents on his back, I was still pretty unsure how I was going to paint them as I hadn't settled on how I was going to paint the brass or the copper all around the model. So I covered it in uh, Shayish Purple, the Citadel Contrast paint. And actually, I think that's a really, really nice effect. I think it looks really, really good on top of uh, a, a copper colour. But we needed to make it stand out a little bit more. So we're taking what we're taking from the face and we're going to OSL the hell out of the little vents on his back. It also helps tie the model together and tell a bit of a story that you've got this fiery forge-like flame emanating from his face and then it exudes out the vents in his back. So this time we're going to do the same process that we did for the face and this time we're going to introduce red as the first colour that we use to show that it's a bit cooler coming out of the back. It's still hot, still terrifying, wouldn't want to be caught in it, but it's a bit cooler and then it emanates down from red to orange about midway and then yellow down at the bottom of the mouths of the vents on his back and then that leads to his face. here my camera seemed to really really struggle with focusing on the side of Vashtor and I have no idea why but we're laying down the first red and that's going over the tops of the eyes around the vents on the model. We purposely left some white on the model because then we're now going for the next stage where we put the orange onto the model. Can you see where we're going with this? And then because overspray is inevitable, fortunately, because it's on a darker colour, it's not that noticeable on the actual metallic parts of the vents themselves. We're going to put some of our titanium white ink, yes, it's that stuff again, into the mouths of the vents. And then guess what? We're going to hit it with the yellow. Next up, we're going to have a proper look at the metallics and I finally decide what I'm going to do with them on the project. Because bearing in mind that he's got this great big set of metallic wings. So we are going to base coat them all with our Vallejo metal color gun metal to begin with. Mm -hmm. 
And then because a lot of the kind of the metal fabricated areas of the model all seem to follow the same rule. There's a lot of spikes on the model and they all seem to follow the same rule of a top part over a sharp part. So you've got the claws, there's a spike on his back, there's each prong of his wings. So we're going to take the top of the spiky bit, uh, very chaotic terminology I know, and we're going to paint it off camera apparently, come on, with our metal colour copper. And then once all of the metallics on the model have dried out, we then smother it in Agrax Earthshade. So once the Agrax Earthshade is all dry, we then go back with our copper, with our metal colour uh, gunmetal and we start to highlight. Where do I put the highlights? So I like to, when I highlight metallics, I like to put the model together because at that point I'm trying to avoid highlighting areas that I do not necessarily need to avoid and I need to see which direction the, the extremities are pointing essentially so I can pick my highlights wisely. I'll tend to only highlight stuff that is facing upwards towards the light. And that also includes the trim around the armour of the model. He's got kind of a, a brass collar thing going on with how his armour fits onto his body. So again, we're going to essentially edge highlight around those areas. The actual steel around the model, I'm a little less picky about where I'm going to put the highlights in because I find the Agrax Earthshade, while it does dull down all metallics, it really, really kind of kicks the sheen out of the steel. And that's kind of the point of the uh, areas of the model where you want the reflections of the metallics to be catching your eye. So my kind of rule of thumb when I'm highlighting steel and silver and things like that is to go back over the paint job and leave the recesses where the shade has pulled the most. So I know it's a bit of a cop out, I'm not going to show you the painting process for the wings because it took a damn long time and it would just over inflate an already pretty long video as I am recording this. Uh, so now we're just going to pick out the final details around the model. So that is filling in the tubing with a bit of colour, add a bit of red onto the model. It's painting in the hooves, it's painting in the claws on the edge of the armour, and then we're going to have the grand reveal. So thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, if you've watched this far, then please, once again, give me a like, give me a comment. Let's see if we can beat 11. Let's go for 12. Yeah. Uh, and if you keep seeing this content, maybe you should subscribe. That'd be really nice. Thank you very much. See you soon and bye-bye for now.